In a world where the dead feast upon the living, you never know what moment will be your last. That's why we fight for every fleeting second as we struggle to survive in Syracuse. Syracuse.com Flash Fiction Peeps by Dave Sipley For Marty, the only person who will get all the jokes. I remember the good old days when I wasn't starving to death. Remember when you could drive your car to a fast food window and get a day's worth of calories in a single extra value meal? Do you remember how a pit of that hippie ice cream, the one they make out of monkeys, went right to the pleasure centers of your brain? Do you remember those milkshakes that didn't contain any milk and didn't need to be shaken, but were just some sort of chocolate-colored colloidal slop? I do. What I wouldn't give for one of them now. I don't want to complain. Everyone in the zone is living the Spartan lifestyle. Everyone is hungry. Everyone is sacrificing. Everyone is suffering. Everyone is hungry. But they all have something that I don't. Homegrown insulin. They've got C-peptides in their bloodstream. They've got the ability to starve to death the old-fashioned way by chronic malnutrition. Not me. I've been an insulin-dependent diabetic since I was seven years old. I got pretty good at it. I had a good life. I could eat cheesecake and drink beer, have seconds and thirds. I just hit some buttons on my insulin pump and check my blood sugar a few hours later. I'd adjust it with more food or more insulin. The hardest part about it was picking up my supplies every three months. Because I knew how to conserve and my doctor played along, I was able to stretch those supplies out to four or five to save a few bucks. I actually complained because a three-month supply of insulin cost me 80 bucks. Wish I could get that sort of deal now. Do you remember how cool it was to have health insurance? I ran out of supplies for my insulin pump about six months back. I've been dosing myself occasionally with a half-cc syringe that Kresner gave me. I don't take insulin like I used to. I'm down to about 15 units a day. That's a third of what I used to take. It's not enough to cover my meals. I can taste my blood sugar. My breath smells like rotting fruit. I can't drink enough water and I have to piss all the time. I can't burn enough glucose, so I'm burning nothing but fat, whatever's left. My life is a 24-7 Atkins diet. Last Christmas, I treated myself to enough insulin to bring me back to normal. I ate two slices of bread. I never noticed how good bread was. Insulin's getting harder to find. Most of the pharmacies have been looted, and the heat last summer made the old stock lose its effectiveness. I'm not going to make it much longer. If I ever run into that president that banned stem cell research, I'll hit him with my Z. That eight-year head start could have made a difference. Then maybe I could have starved to death like a normal person around here. Brooks put me in corpse core because I was a bad bet. Everybody's polite about it. They don't mention it, but they know I'm expendable. I don't think I was that way in my old life. I probably was, I don't know. I think people like me because they joke around. I used to pretend I was crazy and talk about how much I hated peeps. The peep armies are coming and they must be destroyed, I used to say. It was dumb, but people played along. They'd leave peeps for me in my mailbox or on my desk. I made a big show of destroying them. I'd impale the chicks on pencils or stomp on them like I was Ozzy Osbourne. Everyone thought it was crazy. Sort of the way they thought the outbreak was crazy. I hated the taste of those things. They were awful. That sticky, chewy, insubstantial, non-resisting foam. If I had one now, I would eat it just to remember how much I hate the way they tasted. Even though it would make me thirstier and that much ironically closer to starving to death. It's just not fair. I'm in the middle of Ethiopia and everyone around me gets to eat like kings. I like food just as much as they do. Eating will kill me. Not eating will kill me. It's just not fair. It's just not Jensen, you're getting all spacey. You having an attack? I wiped the tear off my left cheek with my glove. It was on the window side away from him he may not have seen. I mumbled something so he would leave me alone. It didn't work. You gotta focus on the mission, ma'am. What are you thinking about anyway? Marshmallows. I'd kill your fucking mother for a fucking marshmallow. I turned my head to the window, and this time, I didn't bother trying to wipe away the tears.
Zeracuse.com audio is released under a Creative Commons 3.0 attribution, non-commercial, non-derivative works license. That means you can share it as long as you give Zeracuse.com and the author credit and don't sell it or change it. Find stories like this and more at Zeracuse.com.